Hello. Welcome to Aging Well in America. I'm Anne Marie Guattari, your host. Every day, 7,000 people in the United States turn 65 years old. There are approximately 5.5 million people aged 85 or older. By the year 2050, that number will grow to 20. 20 million people will be aged 85 or older. There are so many things going on around the world and, in, and right here in our own community to prepare us for that. And today I have with us a very, very special example of some of that good work. With us is Dr. Mirza Begg. Hi, I'm Mirza. We are at the Assessment Center at Henry Ford Cottage. And Dr. Mirza, Dr. Begg, excuse me, is going to tell us about the Geriatric Assessment Center right here. Dr. Begg, yes. you have been here since the assessment center opened, which hasn't been all that long, and you've been able to accomplish some of your vision and some of your dream in being a, a geriatric doctor all of these years. So tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Sure. Thanks for inviting us. You're very welcome. And, uh, you know, I'm a geriatrician. So a geriatrician is a physician who is trained um, to take care of people who are 65 and above. Mm -hmm. I call them more mature adults, mm -hmm. uh, more experienced adults or seniors. Um, the, geriatric, the science of geriatric medicine is relatively new and there is a lot of research is going on and more focus has been because as the population is going up, um, we are studying more uh, what, how to help this patient population. It has been identified that there are needs of this patient population which are different than younger patient population. Just like how we deal with pediatric patients, mm -hmm. the children. Mm -hmm. They are normal human beings, but with different set of unique needs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of emphasis on how to take care of these, pa uh, these patients well. What's the best way of doing it? And the studies and the research has uh, pointed towards that there's uh, it, the reason for all these problems usually is multifactorial. What it means is there are multiple factors, multiple problems which are there which interact with each other and cause a bigger problem. For instance, fall, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. a person falls, a younger kid falls all the time, a kid falls all the time, they bounce back, it starts running. But what will happen if a 30 year old falls? He will limp for a couple of days. What will happen if an 80 year old falls? He's going to break his head. He'll be in a nursing home for how long? Maybe six months for the rest of his life. We don't know. So uh, we know it's 50% of the patient ever returned back home. So why this happens? What's the difference? And a lot of studies are showing that a multifactorial approach, that means looking at from different perspective and uh, helps to come up with better care for these patients. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have come up with this multidisciplinary model as this assessment clinic, uh, which is called uh, Geriatric Assessment Clinic for Seniors, obviously, at Henry Ford Cottage Medical Center. When, when did the uh, center open? It opened about a year ago. About a year ago. Yes, uh, in October okay. last year. Can you, um, well, you were starting to tell us about some of the assessments, the specific assessments that do go on here. So, so tell us what uh, somebody would go through. So what happened is when we get a referral and we make an appointment with the patient, the first initial appointment uh, consists of a long um, assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, so a patient is seen by a geriatrician. Mm -hmm a nurse practitioner who's trained in geriatrics too, a physical therapist, a pharmacist, and a social worker. Okay. And the reason we have, have these disciplines involved is because I think they're main disciplines which are really crucial to take care of these patients. And we all assess the patients separately. Mm -hmm. And then after all the assessments are done, we get together, we sit and discuss our own assessment, share our findings with each other, and then try to come up with a plan <clears throat> which is the best possible plan unique to the needs of that, of that particular patient. That patient. Things we keep in mind is patient's wishes, what are, what is, what are the important things for patient and from the family's perspective as well. Okay. When, um, first of all, how does somebody 
how does a patient become a patient here? How, if, if they are not um, a patient of yours or one of your colleagues, or they're, they're not seen typically um, here at this hospital, how, how do they, um, they uh, can, get uh, an They assessment? can call us and find out. They can, sometimes they do not need a referral. They can make their own appointments or family can call and make appointment. Uh, sometimes they would need a refer from their primary care physician. Okay. And, but uh, my colleague, Bill Pasculus, can mm -hmm. give you more details okay. we'll uh, talk to about Bill. insurance and how everything sure. works. Um, most of the actually appointments are made by family calling in when they find out, okay, this is a place where uh, people are trained to take care of okay. their mother or dad or grandpa or grandma. So most of the patients, of course, um, as you mentioned, they already have a primary care physician. How does the information that they get here then um, become part of their medical file? What does their doctor do so with that if, information? Uh, if what we do is, uh, if it's a referral, even if the patient comes in, and so we try to get the information of their primary care physician, and we send all this information to their primary care physician. Okay. So we tell them what our assessment was, what our findings are, so they know uh, what we suggest or recommend. And we try to work with their primary care physician because uh, it's very important that we interact and sure. we uh, co communicate well with their primary care physicians. I'm assuming that's a, um, a pretty ordinary uh, day in your life to work with uh, doctors, other doctors who um, are <laughs> yes, their primary care the physicians. Yeah. Yeah. Prim yeah. Other primary care physicians, other specialists sure. to coordinate, communicate, uh, inf you know, our findings, sure. our, um, what we think is important for the, from the patient's care. Okay. So you mentioned um, all of the different assessments that they have done, and, and the first one you mentioned was um, an assessment by a geriatric right. medical do doctor such as yourself. So, and that takes place in an exam room such as right. this, where we, where we are. Right. Correct? So, um, so tell us a little bit about what's here, and uh, we've got uh, Kermit Potter, who is standing in as a geriatric patient. <laughs> um, he's the... Um, I hope you're comfortable in this seat. Yes. Okay. Yes, very okay. Good. okay. So, so this I'll, is I'll one of you. our examination rooms. Okay. Um, this is an examination table. Can you show I'll, us how uh, yeah. it works? Sure. So this is a table which is um, easily... We can uh, move it easily so that it's more convenient and comfortable for the patient mm -hmm. because sometimes it's difficult for a patient to, sure. you know, jump up and sit on the um, examination sure. table. So you can like move it up. Yeah. So I can even can, we can pull this out so they can relax, and then we can pull the head down. As just tell me when you're uncomfortable, and we can stop it. That's good. That's good. And then we can move it up and down depending on the need of the examiner. So it's almost like um, a, a dental chair is what I'm exactly. thinking of. Exactly. That's how it, uh, it's, yeah, it's a good example. That's something similar to a dental or OR chair. And uh, so this way, and it's pretty good, pretty low. So the risk of fall is diminished. Right. So. And the, um, the armrests are important. Yes. They're for the support and they also give some security. To this, and uh, they help helps them, them get to up. maneuver themselves. Yeah, correct. I've I've been in more than one appointment with my mom where she could not. Her right. appointment took her uh, exam took place in a chair. Yeah, so this gives them stability to mm -hmm. to give support mm -hmm. to sit up and mm -hmm. move themselves in the examination table. Right. Then I'll put this in. Excellent. Then I'll show you some things which we have very simple devices, mm -hmm. but help a lot for our senior patient. So this is a magnifying glass, mm -hmm. and it can lift too. Okay. So that helps uh, a person who has difficulty reading or problem with vision to read better. Is that, um, is that part of the exam that they would actually use the, um, the, the No, it's uh, to help to them. Uh, no, it's to basically assist them. It, while they're filling while out they're forms filling or, or paperwork. Or if understand. you're doing some tests, if they need, they forgot to bring their glasses. So I they understand. can read, you know, okay. so which is okay. a common problem. And it also gives us some idea how bad their vision is, so mm -hmm. it helps us. Mm -hmm. This is uh, for hearing, mm -hmm. and so they can put this on their ears. So if they have difficulty with hearing and they don't have hearing aids, a lot of times, a lot of seniors don't know. So that's so a we can microphone? speak. Yeah, we can speak in oh this. My. And then you want to put this on? Sure. <laughs> so we can adjust the volume. How is it? Is it too loud? Can you hear? Uh, no. 
There we go. Better? Yeah. Okay. So we can adjust according to the knees. I don't want to scream at this. <laughs> oh, that's But some terrific. people can, yeah. Oh, my so goodness. that helps that a lot. And uh, so it helps the patient, avoids frustration, you know, because. What it does really, again, and I'm thinking of my own um, experience taking my parents to their doctor appointments, is it makes them part of the appointment exactly. as opposed to us. You know, we're always speaking about them and around right. them, right? So goal is to focus on the patient. Yeah. How we yeah. can meet yeah. the needs of the patient. Okay. Just two Great. little two little aids. Great. They can help a lot. And yeah. these are the simple examples they can use them at home as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. and help them in daily life. Then um, if you look around, we have these um, seats here, uh, which, which you can pu uh, put on their, you know, uh, commodes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's uh, they're meant to be for pro, uh, seniors who have difficulty getting up mm -hmm. getting down mm -hmm. um, many um, seniors have yeah. have these in their um, in their, in their homes, homes now. as well right uh, many are reluctant yeah. to get them because they look you know right they don't go with the decor but it's, as a but they help a lot I think yeah. it's very important then we have um, physical therapists. They do uh, as their assessments, so they make them walk, and they have their own measurements and equipment which they use, which we cannot show you here. Uh, they take the patient out just uh, in the same hallway, down okay. the hallway, so they do that. Okay. Um, and most important of all is the assessment, the multidisciplinary assessment. You know where all these disciplines come and sit together, and then discuss, share their findings, and then discuss and come up with a plan which is unique to that particular patient. I think which is really very, can which you, is the most important Can part. you give us an example of, um, of a, uh, an anecdote of a patient that came in here with, uh, with a specific need or maybe they didn't even know what they needed right. and the plan that was no, resulted? It's, it's a very good question and it happens all the time. I mean we have patients who come here um, who thought they are seeing the best doctors everywhere, and they were seeing the best doctors. But the thing is, uh, there was no communication between the doctors. So when our pharmacist assessed all the medications, and then she, when she presented uh, her findings to me, there were medications which were important, but if you look at them together, they were causing a lot of problems, like dizziness, making them fall. So we had to cut down and readjust what we did, just sometimes simple readjust. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the dose of the medication, mm -hmm. cutting down some of the medications, uh, making, um, trying to figure out which is the most important, keep that, and that helped. Mm -hmm. You know, first uh, there was a person of mine, she couldn't walk properly, she was dizzy all the time because of all these medications she was taking for heart and diabetes. We just adjusted the dose and she was doing fine. She oh went the next month to Vegas for a oh, trip. Really? And the family was so <laughs> appreciative of that. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, again, uh, same thing is with falls. You know, a person has a cane or a walker but not using it properly. And, you know, we sat together and we discussed our findings with the physical therapist findings. And we said, let's come up with another kind of a walker which she can use better and yeah. teach her how to use it, educate them how to use it. So then in terms of your process, someone makes a simple phone call, they make an appointment, they come in, how long do they spend here for the assessment and then they're called back with the plan? Right. So on average, it takes about the whole, for the whole assessment, about four hours. Okay. Then uh, we have them come back after a week where we discuss all our findings with them and present them our recommendations. And we give them, uh, we go, you know, explain them everything. We answer all their questions. And we also, uh, after taking their permission, we send those uh, recommendations to their primary care physician as well. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that uh, you wanted to show us that we haven't, um, we haven't looked at or talked about uh, in this exam room? No, I, I think, I mean, we have, uh, we have a computer. We have all the records electronic. Okay. So we have electronic medical record system. So which really helps a lot because if there is any question or an issue, we can just pull up and see if the patient has been to another doctor or ha already had another some CAT scan of the head or something. We do not need to repeat it, but we'll have those findings here. If the person comes from another system, 
we can we have we try to get those records beforehand okay. so uh, this is and everything is electronic if we prescriptions we write we send to the pharmacy electronically so uh, I think that's uh, that's a very important part I think it's a very yep. important part from the medical uh, care for yeah, the patient that's right thank you Kermit did you have any questions that uh, you wanted no not that really I, missed? No, okay. I think this is great you know yeah. the examining table <laughs> it's a great improvement over trying to hike yourself up. You'd like to have that in your in your living yeah, room. Yeah, I'll take this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we'll be back in a few minutes with the administrator of the assessment center here, Bill Pascoulas. Thank you. Hi, Bill. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us, and thank you for uh, having us here on your turf at the uh, senior assessment center at Henry Ford Cottage. My pleasure. Bill, this has been um, a long time in coming, this uh, uh, center. Those that have followed it um, know that a lot of passion, a lot of thought went into it. Tell us a little bit about the beginnings. Sure. Um, together with the geriatrics team, uh, we had a vision on meeting seniors exactly where they're at. And a part of that is the assessment center for seniors. We have a home visiting physicians program, and we have other kind of geriatric focused programs but we needed to establish a center like this that tailor that was tailored to the needs of the senior population. Mm -hmm. And for us in the local community, this is the first for this region. Mm -hmm. Did you model it after um, a, a, a center anywhere in the, in the country or the world for that matter? As a part, it's interesting that you mentioned that. As a part of its development, we talked to uh, Mayo Clinic, mm -hmm. John Hopkins. We spoke to UCLA Reagan Medical Center. Uh, Mount Sinai, New York, and we actually traveled out west to one of the Kaiser facilities. And so we took the best of what people are doing around the country and we brought it back home to Henry Ford. Wonderful. We're, we are really fortunate in this, uh, in this community to have this resource. So you've been open um, about a year, uh, starting uh, in um, the fall of uh, 2011. Actually, September 7th was our anniversary. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Yes. So we're just, just a little bit past that. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit more about um, the experience. How, um, how does someone find their way here once they do? What, uh, what are some of the disciplines? Uh, Dr. Begg uh, gave us a, a great example of what happens right here in this examining room, but um, you mentioned social workers. I know we have uh, therapy, physical occupational therapists as well. Sure. Um, tell us a little bit more about what happens in those assessments. Okay. The, the clinic is tailored for people who are having difficulties at home, for example, frequent hospitalizations, frequent emergency room visits, falls, memory problems. Um, we realize there's plenty of very healthy 65-year-olds, and we're possibly not the best suited for those folks because they can do well with a primary care physician. It's where um, the seniors themselves or their caregivers start to recognize some, some deficits and some failures. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, we get more referrals from the family versus the senior themselves because the, the senior thinks as though this is just normal part of aging mm -hmm. versus the son or daughter, they're more distressed about what they're seeing mom and dad go through. Sure. Now, they don't need to belong to the, to the Henry Ford system, per se. Anybody is welcome? Correct. We, we accept, the Henry Ford Health System accepts 99% of the insurances out there, and you don't have to be a Henry Ford patient. Um, for our center in particular, you can see us as a one-time consultation. You can see us as a specialist, just like a cardiologist or an oncologist. You can see us every three months, and we just interact with your primary care physician or we can see you on a more re ongoing basis. Do you get many referrals from um, primary care physicians? We actually do, yeah. um, because if you think about it, when you go to your primary care physician, they're very limited in terms of the time, you know, because um, it, this is not necessarily their scope. So we get a, a lot of referrals for patients who are falling more at home, mm -hmm. or memory issues, those kinds of things. But we always make sure to connect back with the primary care physician to let them know what our treatment recommendations are. Do you, um, is it very um, common for um, a patient to make this their primary care provider? Some patients do like us as their primary care. And, and that's an option? It is an option, although we do want to work more closely with their primary care physician because we are such a specialized clinic mm -hmm. that we don't want to limit them to just our care. We want, to, we want them to work with their primary care physician. 
when it when it comes to the flu season or colds or th something like that, Got it. you don't necessarily sure. have to come back to us. Sure. And what uh, what does your social worker do? Our social worker, she's part of the assessment process, so she she will screen for depression and cognitive, which is memory kinds of issues, but she is our link into community resources. Okay. So um, a person who is having, for example, needs assistance with uh, medication assistance, or a person who needs um, some chore worker services at home, mm -hmm. she can be that liaison with the outside community mm -hmm. to um, get those resources for the families and the okay. seniors. Okay. Is it, is it um, uh, conceivable that a family member may call and just speak with her and not and determine they don't need um, a full assessment? Once they establish themselves with us, they're welcome to call any person individually. They can call and speak just to the doctor. They can call and talk just to the social worker. It's hard for us to do that before the evaluation. We need to understand the patient sure. as a whole. Sure. And then they're welcome to call the pharmacist individually, the social worker, whatever the case may be. I understand. Okay. How many, uh, how many are on staff here? Well, we have three physicians, a nurse practitioner, a social worker. We have a board-certified geriatric pharmacist. And then we have all the services of the Henry Ford Health System. And we have the community at large. We, sure. want, we want to work with community physicians that are working independently in the surrounding area. Yeah. Well, what else is going on around here? in terms of uh, serving the, uh, the aging? Well, there, there are lots of exciting things happening in the area. There are specialized programming that's about to launch just here at Cottage, um, probably in the next month or so. Um, there is some, th some things happening in terms of the campus. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I can speak highly of and I, um, is services for older citizens. Mm -hmm. is it, they're renovating the former Newberry House behind Cottage. Mm -hmm. That will be their new home. So they'll be part of the campus here, which we're very excited about. So this will make it a senior destination on many different levels. Yeah, not just the medical. Correct, not just the medical. And emotional and uh, so many. Yeah, you know, we're excited about uh, Sox New Home as well. So what else, uh, what else is going on? What else can you tell us in terms of um, what um, our viewers could um, how they should use this, what they can look forward to, and then just any, any type of advice. Well, in terms of the Assessment Center for Seniors, once those treatment recommendations are made, we can provide those links back into the community or our own physicians. So if, if it's found that a, the assessment, um, the physician recommends that they see a cardiologist, we can refer them back to a cardiologist in the community, or we have the resources within the Henry Ford Health System. We're always expanding services here in the ne near east side, mm -hmm. especially with our partner clinic, mm -hmm. the Pearson Clinic. Mm -hmm. um, we're always bringing on more services. And so it's, it's an easy way to be a, a one-stop shop for that senior patient or the caregiver within the Henry Ford Health System, but most importantly, also to the community at large. Because not everybody wants to see a Henry Ford physician. They might have an established cardiologist, sure. dermatologist, so we're open to all of those. Sure. Are you being benchmarked by others now that, uh, that you're established and a, a year old? Well, I can tell you quite honestly, there is nobody else in the region that offers a service like this. The next, um, probably the next provider that I can think of is the Turner Clinic at University of Michigan. Other people have some semblance of this clinic mm -hmm. um, at their systems, but to this degree of investigation and treatment recommendations, mm -hmm. We're the first for the region. Great, great. Before we close, I wonder if you have um, one uh, one particular story that uh, kind of touched your heart, where you feel you've made a difference. Sure. Um, we, of course, see our population as um, being very compromised at times, and so they think of, the, the, of themselves as normal aging. It's not always normal aging. Of course, we all get older. There was one in particular lady that came to us early on and she was at an assisted living place. Mm -hmm. And by, uh, by going through our evaluation, they changed her meds around, changed the time she took her meds, and she actually moved back in at her home, and now she's taking um, testing to possibly start driving again. Oh, for heaven's sakes, and how old is she? Um, I, I wanna recall, I wanna say that she's, she's early 80s. God bless just by Just by changing her medications and yeah. the time that she takes them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's lots of great, talented yeah. physicians yeah. out there. The problem is, is that our physicians have that specialized training, and they can take the time that some primary care, even our own within the system, 
can't necessarily spend with those patients. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations. And we look forward to the expansion of this wonderful idea. Thank you very okay. much.